You're watching The Business of Law, brought to you by Bloomberg Law and the ABA Journal. I'm Lee Pacquia. Today we're talking with Toby Brown. He's the Director of Strategic Pricing and Analytics for Aiken Gump. He's also a blogger over at the popular Three Geeks in the Law blog. He's joining us from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Toby. Thank you. Uh, really glad you came by to talk to us today. You've had a really interesting career up until this point. Before we get down to brass tacks, I was wondering if you could take us through how you got to this point. Certainly. I uh, had a prior firm. I was in a, a knowledge management role, uh, actually in a leadership meeting talking about how all the sort of innovative knowledge management tools and techniques were going to become mission critical because of alternative fee arrangements. This was about five years ago. Um, all anyone heard was alternative fee arrangements and not long after that, that was all I was doing. And that uh, started to evolve even back at the prior firm up into a what I would call a more appropriate pricing sort of uh, approach, uh, and it continues to evolve. Now, do you come from a legal background or a tech background? Um, both, actually. Uh, previously, you know, years ago, was uh, oversaw a network and all that kind of stuff. That was a long time ago. Uh, my background, educationally, I've got a master's in economics, but I've been in the legal industry for a long time, served in a, a variety of roles, so my background is has financial, technology, marketing, um, and a few other things like that. Mm -hmm. Touching on a lot of large disciplines. And now you're at Aiken Gump, you're the director of uh, pricing uh, and, and analytics. Uh, what exactly do you do now? My original sort of push at Aiken Gump has been on pricing. You know, your more classic, you know, getting down how pricing is proposed, evaluated, all those sorts of things. And now my attention is starting to shift towards what I would call at a broader level practice management, which includes legal project management and a number of other things. You know, I might term it practice reengineering. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's got to be an interesting, uh, if not daunting, task. Law firms, uh, as we've discussed on this show, are sprawling uh, entities. How do you come up with systems and initiatives that make sense for all the various moving parts at a large law firm? It's got to be, as I said, a daunting task. Yeah, and that's, that's a good question, and currently, or this year, I've been going through, uh, you know, an analysis and a priority setting practice by practice, because even, even you know, you, you're going to roll that up to a firm level, but different practices are going to have different needs and different priorities. Really, what I'm looking at is to see what, how they're structured in terms of staffing and what their challenges are, and that leads us to what kinds of tools and approaches and things like that that they might need to move forward profitably. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you were working on uh, implementing uh, legal process management software. Uh, in rough terms, how much is Aiken Gump going to spend on software like that in a given year? Um, we're currently in a pilot with, on, on a product uh, from ERM called Lean for Legal. Uh, as, that, as we roll out of that pilot, um, we'll be committing more resources. This year, well, I, I have in my budget probably about $100,000. How that gets spent will depend on how the pilot goes and what the needs are of each practice group and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us a little bit through the software, what it does, how it's going to work? Um, what ultimately is it going to do for Aiken Gump if it works? Well, the group we're piloting with, I'll use that as a way to, to describe it. It's a transactional practice and they do a lot of fixed fee work. And the practice group leader there has been very uh, engaged in this issue and he sees the value of it and so with that group they had laid out um, a series of phases uh, to cover the type of uh, work that they're doing under the fixed fee and then they saw that they they would benefit from having a tool to help them manage it and understand it and improve uh, the tool one of the challenges in the whole legal project and process management space is how you marry, we'll say, traditional project management into the way lawyers practice. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be very careful about that because you can't, I wouldn't suggest you would just impose that classic project management you know, approach on top of how laws practice. I think it would be an oil and water. So you've got to find a way to sort of complementary or a better word I'm sure exists, but a way to bring it in such that it's not disruptive and you can find ways to benefit from project management without fully disrupting the way uh, lawyers are providing their services. Yeah, I understand uh, that you can't just dump it on everyone at the same time. Uh, does that mean you start with specific partners or 
specific practice groups? And if so, how do you determine which ones? Do you just go with the people that are more tech savvy and open to something like this? Or is it more about uh, a certain practice area being more amenable to using, using a tool like this? I see it being successful in two different ways. The first one we're already sort of talking about, and that's where a partner in a leadership role sees the value of it and says, we are going to do this. Uh, and they they make it happen. So that's sort of a top down where the leadership says this this will work here. And at our firm, it is working. Uh, the the group is managing the projects very well. They are you know I'll say above average in profitability with their work. So that that's type one. Type two, which we also have, is where a client specifies the project management is important to them, and they want it you know part and parcel with the services that are being performed. I would say the client one, um, I'm hoping to see more of those. Uh, you know, when we're, that's what lawyers are trained to do is respond to clients' requests and needs. So if we can have more of those start to occur, and we're actually at, you know, reaching out to our clients saying we think this is a way to get a win-win. So I, those are the two ways where I really see it succeeding. Where I've seen it challenge is where someone, or a group, or you know, a partner, somebody says, oh, we really need to do this, and you come forth with tools and processes and they tend to sit on the shelf because there's no compelling reason for them to engage on them. So, you know, those are the two ways I see it succeeding and a caution about, you know, how, how you might not want to move into it. Mm -hmm. Is there a sense at, at Aiken Gump that there's um, a firm understanding of what the metrics are for success? And if so, what are they in the near term? The story that I give to our partners is, is that we got to be getting better. And so what does better mean in this sort of context? It means happy clients, and it means a profitable outcome for the firm. So, you know, in terms of the metrics, are they able to manage budgets within fixed fees or just within a budget? Um, are they able to manage it in a profitable way? Uh, the, you know, the levers of profit are, are effectively, you know, are you coming in, it's traditional project management, are you coming in on time and under budget and with the right resource? It's, it's really interesting to sit down and talk about implementing this kind of software. When we talk about um, legal project management, um, we're really talking about the way law firms work and, and changing the way that, that, that they operate. Um, you've been operating in this space for a long time. Um, when you take a step back and, and, and look at the world from 35,000 feet, um, how do you see this evolving? What, what do you expect to be working on in five years' time? Five years is a long time. <laughs> Especially oh. in this world, right? I mean, the, the technology um, just yeah. moves so quickly. Yeah, well, you know, if you look at, you know, I'll take a step back, and if you, I'll sort of start with the evolution of pricing. Pricing started off as alternative fee arrangements, and now it's it's really evolved to a point where it's it's becoming embedded in the practice of law. Most of the AmLaw 50, or maybe all the AmLaw 50, and we're headed towards all the AmLaw 100, have some sort of pricing function within their firm. Um, it might take a more narrow set of functions or tasks, or it might take a very broad set, but that is evolving to where uh, firms are saying, yeah, we have to do that. I think on the legal project management side, we are just starting down that path where people have been saying they need to do it, they're showing a willingness, but they're having a hard time actually putting an oar in the water and engaging in it. So I see that evolving, and if you look at the whole, you know, I'll call it practice re-engineering, I think we're going to move through phases where different parts of the practice get re-engineered. And so in, over the next five years, I mean, I have, essentially, I've laid out a plan it's a you know five point plan. You always have to have some number attached to it, and I see that over the five years, I'm going to be tackling each of those five points. And hopefully, at the end of the five years, all five will be embedded in the way our firm provides its services. Mm. Really interesting stuff, Toby Brown from Making Up. I want to thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, be sure to go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can see more of our videos on YouTube, and you can follow our updates, of course, on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.